So it turns out to be very, very interesting to start with a mod that now is not necessarily prime, so a little Fermat doesn't directly apply, um, and look at a number in that mod and raise it to the power of the phi function of the mod. And so we're going to do a couple examples. Um, and it, it depends a bit on exactly what number we pick. Um, so this is definitely the subject of the next section, but we're trying to get a little, a little teaser for that. Um, so we're going to calculate 12 raised to the power of phi of 25, which we'll calculate in just a minute, mod 25. So we're really thinking about we're living in the mod 25 world and we're seeing if there's something special about raising to this particular power. A hint of that is that if this were a prime, if the mod were a prime, phi of it would be n minus 1, and raising to the n minus 1 in a, in a prime mod activates a little Fermat. So we're going to see if there's anything similar. Uh, we're also going to do 15 to the phi of 25, mod 25, see what happens. Okay, so first of all, what is phi of 25? Well, this is very much like what we had before, and in fact, I pretty much gave, gave away what the formula is, and we have a formula in the book, but if we wanted to do it directly, again, one more time, we just list it out. It's the number of elements uh, in the set 1, 2, 3, 4, skip 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, skip 10, 11, etc. That's all the 25 numbers between 0 and 24, except the multiples of 5, and so it's going to be 20. Okay. Um, so, in fact, this is really just raising 12 to the 20th power, okay, mod 25, of course, and then it's going to be 15 to the 20th power, so we'll do the math. Okay, so 12 to the 20th power. Well, how the heck do you do that, mod 25, without just taking an immense amount of time or using a calculator? One thing that's really important is do not use a pocket or scientific or graphing calculator to calculate 12 to the 20th and then reduce it mod 25. You might be able to get away with that, but at some point, higher and higher exponents get rounded off on calculators and are not the same integer they were started with. It's just an approximation. That's fine for a lot of scientific computing purposes, but it's terrible for number theory, and you're going to get absolutely the wrong answer. Okay, So we have to be smart and efficient about this. You could use calculators like Wolfram Alpha, things like that, but we don't have to do that. These are still relatively small numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up a, a table of powers of 12, and we're just going to go, go from 12 to the 1 to 12 to the 2, and we're going to see exactly how much work we really have to do, and it's not that much. So 12 to the 1, of course, is 12. 12 to the 2 is 144, which is congruent, ooh, that's not very pretty, to 19 mod 25. Okay, we just, I just divide by 25 and find the remainder. Not hard. Okay, now here's the, here's the trick. I'm going to strategically try to get up to a power of 20, and I'm not going to do every power in between by any means. Next thing I could do, I could, I could get to 12 to the 4th just by squaring 19. So 19 times 19, 19 is not too bad. That's 361. Oops. Okay. And if you subtract off a 350 from that, you get that it's congruent to 11 mod, uh, mod 25. Okay. Now, here's the deal. If I want to get to 20, um, then I could, uh, I could, it'd be really nice if I got to 12 to the fifth, because then I could just square that twice. And so, okay, how do you get from 12 to the fourth to 12 to the fifth? Oh, I'm just going to take 11, oh, i got to be in math mode, or I should be in math mode, times uh, 12, and then reduce it, okay? So here, this was 12 squared, by definition. This, I calculated as 19 squared, which is the same thing as 12 to the fourth, okay, in mod 25, of course. Now, I just multiply by 11 one more time. 132, reduce mod 25, this turns out to be 7. And now I'm really almost there, okay? Now, I'm just going to skip over 6, 7, 8, 9. I, I put those in there, but I left them blank on purpose. Ooh, it's getting going off the page, but let me go ahead and just delete this. Okay. It'll be come back onto the page. So we know how we got those. I'm just going to go back to the summary version, okay? 7, I'm going to square it to get 12 to the 10th. So, you know, I'm using rules of exponents big time here. I'm using the fact that 12 to the 10th is 12 to the fifth and then squared. So this is a, a modification of a very systematic method that they'll talk about very soon in the book called repeated squaring. That if you want to get powers, don't calculate every power and um, don't go to um, a calculator unless it's a very sophisticated one. Okay, so 12 to the fifth I already know is 7, 7 squared 
is 49, and that's 24. And now I'm going to use one more trick. 24 is a beautifully simple number, not 25. That's minus 1. Okay, I really should be writing equivalents or putting bars on it, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, and that's great because squaring that is the last thing I need to do to get to the 20th, and minus 1 squared is just 1. So we get an interesting answer. Hmm, 1. That's very interesting. That's similar. Well, it's basically the answer we would have gotten um, in the Fermat situation, and it turns out that that is a hint of the, the generalization of the story that's due to Euler. Okay, now what about 15 to the 20th? Is it going to be 1 as well? Well, Right off the bat, we can see that's not possible because 15 is divisible by 5 and 25 is divisible by 5. So I'm multiplying a bunch of 15s by each other and then reducing, like subtracting off a multiple of 25. No matter what I do, I'm, I'm going to get a multiple of 5. So I can't possibly get 1 here. And in fact, I get something really, really simple and dorky if I do the same process. 15 to the 1 is 15. 15 squared already is 225. Well, guess what? That's divisible by 25. Of course it is, because I had a 5 that was a factor of 15. I've squared it. Of course it's going to have a factor of 25. So it's just 0. And now if I multiply anything by that, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So that's very different. And that is going to be uh, equal 0. Okay. And it shouldn't be shocking that I'm getting very different answers, because 12 is a reduced residue. 12 was uh, relatively primed to 25. Um, and so good things can happen, and in particular, starting with 12 and multiplying it by itself and then reducing it by 25, I have some hope of getting a 1. If I start out with something that has, shares any factors with 25, and then I reduce it by 25, I'm never going to get 1. So it can't be the same story or even analogous story to Fermat. So this is a big contrast that's important for um, the next section and for what we're going to do to end the course.